What is going on guys? Awesome Nerd Show here and today we're reviewing the new Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie. So we just got done seeing it and so we're going to do a spoiler free re short review here at the beginning and then go into more spoilers and stuff or things that could be spoilers later on. So spoiler free first. Um, is the movie good? I would say definitely yes. Um, after like reflecting on stuff, I would say probably Spider-Man wise it was my favorite. Now, for me personally, I am not a cartoon person. Like, I'm not really big in the cartoons. Like, I'm uh, just, there's very few cartoons I enjoy. And so I was very worried. Like, when I first saw this co was coming out and stuff, I had no interest in it at all. But then as I saw that it had more Spider-Man characters and people from the Spider-Man universe in it, it kind of made me want more interest in it and to see it. But I was still afraid of the graphics just because of all the stuff you see, like promotional and stuff, the like graphics and pictures of it. It had like a 3D tint to it, which you did see that in the movie. Um, well, it was kind of weird, but like this, but it didn't affect the movie at all. So like um, when I was watching the movie, you would the stuff you're supposed to be focusing on, say like the main characters or stuff, would be crystal clear. But then you'd see the stuff in the background, and it would have like that 3D effects where it was all blurry, and then it had like multiple lines around it. Like I said, like it would be in 3D, but it obviously wasn't. Um, and so that like kind of messed me up at points because I just kept got stuck staring at the background trying to figure out like if the lines were actually blurry or if there was something wrong with my eyes. But then I noticed, you know, the people front and center would be crystal clear. So I easily got over that real easily and quickly and it, stuff. It was funny because I thought you had gotten us tickets to the 3D oh, version. Yeah. Which we that's just the thing, they the don't glasses. do, they, I'm pretty sure they don't do 3D anymore. At least I don't think so. I we never go to three. It's been so long since we've been to a three D movie. I couldn't tell you, but I buy the tickets all the time, and I always you know just make sure not to get three D. But I don't even know if there was a three D in this version. But um, but so yeah, graphics wise, it actually turned out to be really good. I didn't end up having issues with it. I thought everything looked amazing, and for the way this story goes and the story that they tell, it I would say it has to be in cartoon. Because they couldn't do this with real life people. I mean, they could do it with, you know, real life and CG as they have done with the Spider-Man characters. Say, like, the Amazing Spider-Man or something where you had, you know, Lizard and stuff. They were de where he's, you know, full CG character. You could do it. But to keep it like a real life version, you couldn't do it. And we'll get into that in the spoilers. So I definitely, um, the graphics, like I said, um, I was worried about. But they weren't a, an issue or anything. But after seeing the movie, that definitely was deserved and that's what it needed to be in for this to happen um what else could you talk about storyline wise um it definitely like because i will just say i guess but i guess it is like an origin story for miles morales um so it is like explaining how he became you know spider-man um and so for an origin story i liked it um and the movie overall in general was really nice and i liked the story and the bringing in of all the different universe characters as you've seen in the trailers and everything um and so that was really good towards the end or at the towards the very end stuff it just it kind of to me fizzled out and I thought it was you know a little lackluster but um, everything else up to that was pretty cool and interesting um, characters are really good so we got a bunch of new characters so of course we've got Miles Morales the young kid you know that's uh, become Spider-Man and I like that whole story we'll get into later and then we had a you know different dimension Peter Parker Spider Gwen Spider-Man Noir Peter Porker or Spider Ham, I mean to say. Um, and then SPDR, I, I can't remember how you're supposed to say the. Penny name. Parker. Yeah, Penny Parker with her robot Spider Man thing. Um, so you had all these different dimension characters coming into the world. And I like, that's again what I liked about it, was seeing these uh, different Spider Man characters being brought in. And I liked all that. Then we got a whole bunch of villains. Um, there were different there were different twists and takes, but I still enjoyed the villains and stuff. I like what they did with them, especially one villain. That's what you'll get into later again, why I really liked it. Um, there was a bunch of, like, see, after seeing it, we saw the credits, obviously, and there were a whole bunch of famous people that were voices in the movie that, you know, we weren't really expecting because um, it's not like we look at that stuff. To It's just whatever they advertise as. Um, so that was cool to see that there were a bunch of, you know, like famous actors and stuff that did voice and stuff. So that was really cool. There is an end credit scene. It's nothing major, but if you just want to see more of what the movie is, you can stick around at the end and it throws in something that we'll talk about in the spoilers. So there is an end credits if you want to stick around for that if you haven't seen it yet. 
Um, but what, I don't know what else we could talk about that's not spoilers. I guess we could go into a rating. Um, I'd say for me, again, I do a scale of 1 to 10 with 5 being direct, you like in the middle, your average movie, not like scale point-wise percentages or whatever. I would have to say this was definitely about, I don't know exactly how high I want to rate it. I would say like a 7.5 to 8. Which again, on my scale, that is still really good. It's not like the best movie ever or best like superhero movie, but to me it's definitely the best Spider-Man movie we've gotten so far. Just because I liked all the different characters and stuff that they did, making the characters how I feel they should be in a movie, but you know, when they're in real life they have to cut back on stuff because it's not, you know, written in comic books so they can't do all the abilities and stuff. Um, so I would say definitely a 7.5 to 8. I can't really determine exactly how I'd want to um, split it up there. But I'd have to say that's my rating. What's your opinion, bro? I'd say it's probably a solid 8 or 9. Yeah, I say I figured you would go higher. Um, the but. thing is, I, I wasn't excited. Like, I wanted to see the movie, but I wanted to see Mortal Engines yeah. more. But I'm glad we did go see this. It was better than I thought it was. Well, I mean, we're planning on seeing both anyways. But yeah, I wanted to do Spider-Man because it, you know, because I wanted to do a review on that because it fits with what we're aiming for on this channel and stuff. You know, comic book related stuff. And I personally have more interest in seeing this than a, than Mortal Engines. But um, like I said, the whole cartoon thing though is what was my drawback for the movie. So that's like our spoiler-free parts. Um, like I said, we'll go into more details now. So if you haven't seen it and didn't want to know anything, go and shut the video off now. But like I said, I assume most of you have if you're watching this. So we're going to get into spoilers now. So in the spoilers now, so we're going to shortly go through the video, I guess. Um, so Miles Morales ends up getting bit by a spider. So it's pretty much, you know, like the similar Spider-Man origin story. Gets bit by a spider, gets these powers. But they are different powers than the uh, normal or original Spider-Man, I guess you could say. But they have this whole thing with Wilson Fisk, you know, being the big mean evil guy that he is or whatever trying to take over the world do whatever he ends up having the super collider that he's trying to bring back his wife and son that ended up dying he's trying to bring them back to, like from another dimension into this dimension so he can have them back again and in the uh, meantime or while he's doing that spider-man the original spider-man ends up dying uh being killed by fisk and miles is there and sees it and so kind of pet uh Peter, the original Spider-Man, then passes the stuff on to Miles to become the new Spider-Man of this, you know, world we're set in. But while the collider was going off, it did bring in Spider-Man from the other dimensions, uh, the ones we've already mentioned, um, then get brought into this world. And so after Spider-Man dies, you know, the world's, or the New York City and stuff's all sad and everything about Spider-Man. Um, well, Miles goes... Uh, because he knows he has the powers, he had this connection with Spider-Man and everything. He um, <coughs> he then you know goes and buys a Spider-Man costume and stuff because you know he's like I I got to carry on this role of Spider-Man. We don't have Spider-Man anymore, and it's I have the powers and stuff, so it's got to be me. And so he goes and buys like I said a cheap Spider-Man costume, which he buys from Stan Lee, which was cool and fun to see him and everything. Um, but he buys a costume and. Um, it then ends up going to visit Peter Parker's grave where he's, um, he ends up meeting the, the Peter Parker from another dimension, which is an older version um, who in his world got divorced from Mary Jane and just has a crappy life, I guess. And so he's like down on his like in like, I guess I want to say tired of being Spider-Man, but probably not. I don't really know how to I'll label it stuff. But so they end up meeting him, and so then they start to work together, and he starts trying to teach like Miles how to use uh, powers and stuff, and um, be able to access his abilities because he does have different powers than the original Spider-Man. Um, like Miles, he can still like walk on the walls and stuff, all that stuff. But he does have like an electric shock. It seemed like um, I don't know how that came from, um, but he can like shock or shoot electricity or something. I don't know some sort of electricity, and then he can also turn invisible or like his powers. Um, and he still doesn't have like the organic web slinger, so he still has to has the, have the like handmade ones so he can swing and everything. Um, so they start working together, and then they uh, go to like do this whole. Um, microchip or like USB pin thing that the original Spider-Man gave to Miles to was going to shut off the collider and help reverse it and stuff so Fisk couldn't do what he was trying to do and so they're trying to like get the information back because Peter or Miles ends up breaking it and so they end up stumbling across um, this 
doctor lady that ends up be turning into a doctor octopus, a female version. And again, all these characters have like different twists to them. And so it was a female, and then she had what looked to be like rubber hose, like uh, tentacles or something that had like air or liquid in them or something. I don't know, just the way they function seemed weird. So they're not the metal arms that the normal Doc Ock has. And of course, then, like I said, a female version and everything. And then from there, they stumble across Spider-Gwen, which was a girl he met at school. And we see, like, each of their backstory, or, yeah, some of their backstories, like the different Spider-Men as they came in, like what happened to them when they got pulled through. And so she arrived early and uh, could sense this other Spider-Man character, I guess, or Miles. And so she ended up going to his school and, you know, running into him accidentally like seeming like it wasn't intentional but then she knew the whole time and so she turns out you know the spider gwen and ends up helping him out and fighting against the doc ock and stuff and getting him free and then from there they end up beating the other characters again of peter porker or spider ham i was calling that spider-man noir and spdr or whatever the again the girl's name is penny with SPDR and so then they join him up and as a team and stuff and are trying to fight um, Fisk and all his henchmen which we get to see a bunch of henchmen of course there is Fisk as I mentioned the Doc Ock again and then we had Scorpion, Tombstone and Prowler which was Miles uncle um, so he's you know bad in this version and stuff and doesn't know Miles is Spider-Man which they end up finding out obviously right before he dies um, so it was cool to see all those villains uh, Scorpion was a little bit weird um, they changed him a lot and he reminded me a lot of the centaur from the Herc cartoon Hercules movie from Disney. Um, but I really, uh, Tombstone looked just pretty much like he normally does. Um, and then Prowler looked pretty normal. He just had more mechanical stuff from what I've seen. Fisk was really cool. That's one person I really want to talk about. So he's the one that I was mentioning that if it wasn't in a cartoon, they couldn't do what he does. So as I grew up, I think it was from the, old, the 90s Spider-Man cartoon maybe, Fisk was always this big guy and he would do kind of, he had like super strength and stuff. And so he was able to do ridiculous stuff where when you have him in movies, it's just a, you know, normal guy. So like Vincent D'Onofrio in the Daredevil show, he's just a normal human and he may have, you know, some strength and stuff to him. But at this time he was huge he was humongous and he was able to you know pick up cars and everything and like that's the fist that i picture when i you know think of like comic versions or whatever of wilson fisk and so that's why i'm saying like that's what you, the benefit you get from being a cartoon you kind of get people closer to how they are in like a comic or something like that compared to what they'd be in a real life version and then like i said he's huge this big old massive guy and he's got his head but it's like you know down low compared to his giant shoulders and everything it kind of reminds me of the uh, hulk buster from the Marvel yeah, Legends, yeah, the build kind of, of figures, like the tiny little head yeah, with the big body. Yeah, he had a big body, and then they have head, and it's lower than the shoulders and stuff. And so he just looked funny. But again, I really enjoyed that character from this movie and everything. Um, and so then let's just the join up of the uh, Spider-Man characters trying to do this whole dimension thing. They try and get back, sent back to their dimensions, and then, you know, stop Fist from doing his thing as well. So they end up going back into the collider. Um, where they are firing up again to, and Fist starts to bring his wife and son back and they start to, you know, like glitch and appear and stuff. Um, but the Spider-Man people come in and they end up uh, reversing it and, or, yeah, starting to reverse it and so they can each get sent back to their dimensions. And then Miles is the last one left since this is his world that he's staying in. He ends up fighting Fisk, which Fisk, you know, pretty much does like a bane on him or something that's like completely destroys him. But he ends up able to rally back and come back and, you know, ends up, you know, saving the day and everything and ends up, you know, catching Fisk and handing him over to the police and stuff. And so I really enjoyed, you know, seeing all the characters and stuff. That's like my favorite parts about Spider-Man, especially the villains, but getting to see all the additional Spider-Man and they have a whole bunch more they could go into. And I hope, which at this end credit saying we are, I assume, going to get more of it. And so I'm excited to see that and see more Spider-Man characters. But it also had a good story of, you know, an origin story of Miles Morales becoming Spider-Man. Um, even though it's, I is pretty sure it's different from the comics, I don't know. But I assume it is with the whole, you know, bringing in of dimensional characters and stuff. Of how he's, you know, the, kind of like the origins of him. But I like, though, his whole, like, you get um, that, like, of him struggling to become an 
uh, to his powers and use them and stuff. But then you have his family life, where, you know, where he's got his uncle that he looks up to in his favor, but then turns out to be a villain and stuff. And then his struggle with his uh, mom and dad and, you know, being sent off to its school and stuff. I like that whole, it like, was a nice, well-rounded character overall. And so I really enjoyed that. Um, so then we'll just go into the uh, end credit scene real quick. Obviously, uh, the introduction of Spider-Man 2099. And so it was cool, again, to see another character. Um, and then he goes into the Spider-Man uh, cartoon show from, like, the 70s or whatever. And him and Spider-Man just do a whole finger-pointing thing, which was kind of funny. And then, like, there was music. I liked the music throughout the movie. It was uh, pretty decent joy, but I think it fit really well into the movie. And then, of course, there at the very end, right before the credits, we get Spider-Man singing spider bells or something like that it's jingle bell versions with spider-man because it advertises that he has a uh christmas album. yeah christmas album which um i f don't remember all this stuff but i like how they hinted to other movies especially like the toby Maguire. it's so, like at the very the, beginning the spider-man for miles's universe yeah I believe it was that one they were hinting, and he was it kind pretty of much like, was the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Yeah, like yeah. they even did the Spider-Man three when yeah he when he was danced all broody and stuff and yeah danced down, the, down the road and like uh, Aunt May's house looked like set up and neighborhood wise exactly like the house from that Spider-Man and then they hinted at. Um, I think other stuff, and there was like background stuff all over the place. Of course, it's a Sony movie, so they do advertising everywhere that you can see. But they also had stuff for like a comedy special from John Mulaney and stuff, which did the voice of Peter Pork or Spider Ham. And so there was just interesting stuff like that all in the background. But they also did see other stuff. I can't remember what it was. Actually, no. I, I think that think... reference. Oh, it showed him like stopping the train that he did in Spider Man 2 and saving uh, Mary Jane. From the car being thrown in by an octopus. Dot what I was going to say, though, is stuff. when they were doing those scenes, they showed the scene from the first movie when Mary Jane and S Peter were kissing. Kissing, yeah, the, where Peter's upside but down. But in their universe, it was upside down. That was right. I was just thinking about she that. Was she was hanging was from, like, a pipe yeah. by her legs, and she was upside down kissing Peter. Yeah. But when our universe, Peter Parker, was doing his flashbacks, it was the way it was in the movie. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was just fun to see that they didn't include all that stuff. And like I said, they had the comic, act, like actual Spider-Man comic books, well at least one, the first Spider-Man in the stuff. So you got to see, you know, actual Spider-Man comics and stuff. And they reference to like a lot of stories and stuff from Spider-Man, which was really fun and interesting to see. Again, stuff you probably would not get at all in the movies and everything. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Actually, no, I'm thinking about it. We didn't mention uh, the Green Goblin. Oh yeah, at the very beginning, when they're fighting in the collider at the very beginning, uh, Green Goblin was in there. He's a big, giant, like, hulking dragon guy, which isn't that kind of like the ultimate? Or uh, yeah. there's a version somewhat like that. Yeah, and um, I liked how he still had the pumpkins he was throwing around, like, causing explosions, and he had the purple hat on. Looked kind of funny, though, on him, but it looked really cool. I don't know what happened to him, though. He just kind of... Yeah, he, he got... Um, when the collider exploded at the beginning... He just, I assume he got beat or hit by something because he was down and then, um, because Spider-Man had rubble falling on him and he was holding Spider-Man when it exploded. And so I assume he got buried under rubble too and stuff. Um, but I think that's probably going to be it. So, um, if you saw the movie, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. If you agree with our opinion or if you thought it was bad or whatever you thought about it, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed and subscribe to the channel to see more reviews. Again, we've got coming up here in the next week, we've got Aquaman and Bumblebee that we're going to be doing. So you can check those out as well if you're interested in those. But thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.